So in this problem, we have a hot air balloon flying over level ground. That's an important part this time. At this particular speed in this direction, where the first component is due east. So this is east, six in the east direction. The second is due north, so this is going two and north. And the third is perpendicular to the ground. So this is coming out of, basically into the sky. And that's an important thing to recognize this time. So I want to first find the velocity of the balloon. So that means I'm going to have to, my velocity, my speed is 3.5, and this is the direction. So I have to make this a unit vector and multiply by 3.5. So if I find the magnitude of this, so if I find the magnitude of 6 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared, I know that's going to be 36 plus 4 is 40 plus is 49, which is conveniently 7. And so then my velocity vector is going to be 3.5 over 7 times this vector here. If I simplify that, that is equal to 1 half, 6, 2, 3. And so I know then my velocity vector is going to be 3, 1, and then 1.5. All right, so this is my, the velocity of the balloon. Now, part 2, read it, it carefully, and it says, what speed is it ascending? That means how fast is it going up into the sky? Well, this is the ascending going up, so the 1.5 is the going up. That's the speed in uh, my unit is meters per second. I'm going up 1.5 meters per second. So that's a tricky one. Now, the balloon passes over a tracking station at time t equals 0 when its position relative to the tracking station at this time is 0, 0, 30. Find the balloon's displacement relative to the tracking station one minute later. Well, I know that the balloon, I'll call vector B, is at 0, 0, 30 plus T. And it's going at 3, 1, 1 1.5. Now, this is minutes. And this, however, is in seconds. So I know my B is going to be 0, 0, 30 plus 60 times 3, 1, 1 1.5. And when I do that, I did it earlier, and it is 180, 60, and 120 is the displacement where the vector is. Okay, so then at this point, the balloon begins to descend at this particular speed but still traveling in the same bearing. So if you're thinking about this component, this was the north, sorry, this was east, north, and up. Well, then these two, north and east, are the bearing. They're not changing. The only thing changing is my up or down. And so what happens now is for C part, it, I know that it is going to... It's currently at one, so I'm at 180, 60, 120. And then at time t prime, it starts to go 3, 1, and negative 0 0.6. So the bearing's still the same, but it is going down at that speed. So the balloon descends at 0 0.6 while traveling the same bearing. Write down the displacement of the balloon from the tracking station when it begins its descent. So this is going to be the displacement of the balloon now. I'll call it B prime vector. Okay, and so now it wants, the D part says, find the time it takes for the balloon to reach the ground from the moment it begins to descend. So for this particular vector, I want the z component, which is the ascending descent, to be 0. So that means d, for d part, I want 120 minus 0.6t to be 0. And that will find me t. And so then I get the 120 
is equal to 0 0.6 T, and T is going to be 200 seconds for it to reach the ground. And then finally it says E, the distance the balloon traveled from the tracking station when it reaches the ground. Well, at 200 seconds it's at the ground. I have to find the position. So if I put 200 in here, I get 180 plus 200 times 3 is 600. And then 60 plus 200. And the ground is 0. So this is the position of the landing balloon. So 780, 260, and 0. The original tracking station was at 0, 0 was at 0, 0, 30. Now, I want to know the distance away. Well, this is just the elevation. This is going to tell me the distance. So if I actually look at the distance, I'm going to take the square root of 70, 80, because I the distance between these values squared, plus 260 squared, and that will give me my total overall distance, which is 822 meters apart.